And later I'm looking at this worksheet on using residuals. We've got a large set of data here. We've got 12 pieces of data for the amount of time different employees have taken to compile some packages. Okay, There's a number of items as our x variable and time taken is our y variable. And we've got three different packers, Maria, Betty and Alice, being given different number of items to pack and then they're being timed how long it takes them to collect all the items in the warehouse and package them up to be sent away for Christmas. So first part of this, plotting the data on a scatter diagram, it's really useful just to see how the data looks, see if there's any patterns going on, look for a little bit of correlation. I've put all these values into list one and list two on the calculator. I'm pressing graph and then graph one. And I can get from the calculator a graph that looks like this. 12 points are on there, and you can see some kind of linear correlation going along there. So that was part A. For part B, finding the PMCC, Product Moment Correlation Coefficient, and interpreting it in context. I've got all those values in my calculator, so I need to press calc reg x a plus bx to bring up this screen. Here are my values for the PMCC, this is the value of R. Remember, VAR goes from negative 1 to positive 1, and with positive 1 being perfect, positive correlation. I've got 0 0.897 as my PMCC or my R value. Went around to three significant figures. So that is strong positive correlation. This question said in context. Really important to relate it back to the question between the number of items and the time taken to pack. Finding the equation of the regression line of y on x, y was our response variable or our uh, dependent variable. x was our explanatory variable or our um, independent variable. So that's why it's y on x, and we always do it that way around. Again, using those same buttons, finding that same screen again, using the values of a and b for the equation. Now that's with it rounded to three significant figures. For uh, later calculations, I'm going to be using the full values. Remember, why can we use this equation regression line? Because we have evidence of a linear correlation, a really linear relationship between the two variables. If that R value was very low, then it wouldn't make sense to model this with a straight line. Part D, estimating. So we're going to use, I'm going to use that equation that I've got there. I'm going to substitute in the value of 45. Now, really important that I'm thinking, should I round or should I not round? This is using the equation of the regression line when it was rounded. This is the value when it's not rounded. When rounded to three significant figures, this is 374. When rounded to three significant figures, this is 373. That does make a difference to my answer. So I'm not going to use the rounded values, I'm going to use the full values and get a final answer of 373 when rounded. Is this a good prediction? Well, the x value that we've got is within our given range of values. If you look back at that list, the smallest number of packages, the biggest number of packages, 45 is within it. So we are interpolating, yes, it should be a good prediction. The opposite of that if we were given something like 100 packages, that's not in our data set. So maybe if collecting 100 packages, that would take much longer. And so that would be extrapolating and wouldn't be a good prediction. Next part, moving on to the residuals.